Hello everyone, this is Mike and Bev Howard and we're in a Bible study. <laughs> the, uh, we're doing the Lifeway Bible book series and last quarter and this quarter starting uh, two weeks ago, uh, we entered into a two quarter study, a six month study of the Gospel of Luke. I, it's the first time in, in, uh, that I can remember us putting uh, two uh, quarters back to back in the same book. And it's been great. We're able to get down into some really good detail. The book of Luke has been absolutely fabulous for me. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed studying it. I hope you've enjoyed the lessons as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Today's lesson title is Worthy. And it means the, the, the context of that title is, are we worthy to enter into the kingdom of God. And I know if you're a Christian, you've been a Christian for a long time, you got your hand up, you go, I know, I know the answer. Well, stick with me because this is gonna be, I think, a lot of fun. So it didn't seem like a trick question. In Jesus's day, people would come up to him because they knew he was special, a great teacher, a great healer, and many people thought a great prophet. Uh, and, and, and Simon Peter says, oh, you are the Messiah. Okay, so they're getting warmer and warmer and warmer, but they would keep asking him questions. Good teacher, what must I do to get into the kingdom of God? In other words, how can I become worthy of entering into the kingdom? A lot of the stories that Jesus told, a lot of the teachings that Jesus taught had to do with how do you get into the kingdom of God. He told a lot of stories of it's a narrow road, it is a narrow gate, uh, and even one time he says it is easier for a rich man to get into, it is easier for a, a rich man to get through the eye of a needle. Camp. No, it is, excuse me, <laughs> it's easier for a camp. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> It's easier for a camel. But it'd be hard for a rich man, too. It would I mean, be, too. It would be hard for anybody, <laughs> quite right. Uh, it'd be hard for a, easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of God, which sent everybody away scratching their heads. They just It's just this great mystery. And, and I can remember in the second grade, one of my first, if not my first memory of school, uh, my teacher in the second grade was Mrs. Dobson. And Ms. Dobson, I can just remember the one day specifically. Apparently we were working on some sort of math problems. I'm sure it was uh, probably adding two two-digit numbers or something really, really hard for a second grader. Uh, actually, it'll pretty hard for me now. And, and what she wanted us to do was to write our answer down and I put on a piece of paper and come up and show it to her. And I remember standing in a long line, I'd wait, 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 get to her. She'd open the piece of paper and she'd go, no, go back and try again. Well, th it seems to me that everybody is doing just exactly that in the book of Luke. They're walking up to Jesus with, with their answer to the question of what is it gonna take for me to be worthy? He's opening up and he's going, no, that's the wrong answer. Go back and try again. Well, the other thing I remember about this is that there was a number that she had written on the chalkboard, and when it was all over, that number was actually the answer. So you see, the answer to her question was right in front of our face the whole time, but we couldn't see it. So I think you're going to find that it's exactly the same for who is worthy to get into the kingdom of God. But Jesus is not gonna make it easy for these guys. He's going to tell us today, he's gonna to give us two riddles. And for the people, especially the Pharisees, it tied, these riddles that he told, these parables that he told would tie them in logical knots. They could not figure them out. It was so cute to watch them try. Riddle number one is when is being better a bad idea. So when is being a better person a bad idea? Ah, interesting riddle. Riddle number two, when is being like a helpless child better than being the mightiest adult? So we're going to get in and try to answer those two riddles. Got you going, didn't mm -hmm. I? All right, you're interested. I'm interested. All right. I'm going to read through this, the first riddle, of the first uh, parable uh, quickly first, and then we're going to go back and take it apart verse by verse. 
to some who were confident in their own righteousness. In other words, these people thought, I've got the right answer to this question. I know how to be worthy to get into the kingdom of God. To some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, I've got the right answer, but I've looked at his paper. It is not the right answer. Mm -hmm. They looked down on everybody else. Jesus told this parable. Two men, he says, went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself. He didn't want to get close to anybody else and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like that tax collector over there. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Verse 14, I tell you that this man, this tax collector, rather than the other, went home justified before God. In other words, made worthy of the kingdom of God. That's what justified means. For all those who exalt themselves are going to be humbled. And all those who humble themselves are going to be exalted. So, you remember old, oh, I can't remember the name of the series, but uh, I remember uh, Sergeant Friday said yeah. uh, he, he would be interviewing a Dragnet. witness needs a dragnet. Thank you. And, and he would say, just the facts, ma'am. So yes. these are just the facts. Right. Fact number one that we need to understand is that God is righteous. That means he's pure and perfect. The fact number two is we aren't. This, none of this is hard stuff. Fact number three, God can't have fellowship with darkness. In other words, if darkness moved into perfectness, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. So we can't do that. And then number four, so then we need to change into God-like perfectness in order to be with him, to have fellowship with him. Okay, so those are the facts. Can a person, person be worthy, or it means justified before God. And so as Christians, if you're a Christian or if you've been a Christian for a while, uh, if you know your Bible, we know that Jesus is and was the only man who was judged worthy before God. And number two, we also know that by faith, Jesus's righteousness is imputed. That means that God takes Jesus's righteousness and he puts it on our account to us so that God sees us as righteous. But that needs, those two points we know those things as Christians. And by the way, 90, 100% of the non-Christians in the world do not understand that, okay? But even though if we're a Christ follower, even though we know those things, we need to fully understand the implication of those things. And that's what these stories are gonna teach us today, to how to fully understand them. So riddle number one, when is being better a bad idea? Let's go back and look. So his target audience then was to some who were confident, what? In their own righteousness. They knew they had the right answer. He, they said, I'm good. And they looked down on everybody else. They were better than others. So Jesus told them this parable. Two men went up to the temple, one to pray, or one was a Pharisee, and he was really, really good. Now, the, the funny part about this story is Jesus didn't just choose a uh, a reasonably good person and a not so reasonably good person. Uh, for the purpose of highlighting this story, Jesus chose a Pharisee who is the most righteous Jewish person that was alive. These people lived godly lives. They were good people. They were the leaders and they really were good people. So he chose in the story, a really, 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 really good person. And then he chose a really, 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 really bad person, the tax collector. So right away, you know, he's setting up the story. The best person that's in, alive at the time and the worst person that's opposite. alive at the time. Huh? Opposite. Very opposite, very opposite. And the Pharisee stood by himself and he prayed. Now, watch the prayer fairly closely. I thank you mm -hmm. that I am not like other people. Mm -hmm. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this guy over here, the tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get, okay? But the tax collector, so now that's what the Pharisee's doing. And the tax collector, on the other hand, is, is doing something really, really different. The tax collector is standing at a distance. Now they're all at the temple, okay, where they're doing the sin sacrifice. Twice a day, nine and three, they do a sin sacrifice. They sacrifice a lamb. 
Okay, and there, at this point in time, there, the, the sins of, for a brief moment, the sins of all Israel are atoned for at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And that's a great time to pray because you know that God can hear your prayer because right at that moment, this portal into the kingdom of God opens up because your sins have been atoned for. And so zoom, go pray at that point in time. So you've got these two people. One is the Pharisees probably standing real close to the altar, but away from all the people. The other is this poor tax collector who is even a Afraid, ashamed to even approach the altar. So tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even get close or he wouldn't even look up to heaven. He was so ashamed of what he's done, of his life. He wouldn't even look up to heaven. But instead, he just beat his breast and he says, God, I am a sinner. Please have mercy on me. That was his confession. So remember, so Jesus is telling this story for a purpose. And then he says, this is the thing that just blew the all the Pharisees. As a matter of fact, it even blew the minds of his own disciples. He says, I want to tell you this man, this tax collector, got the answer. He got the answer right. And the Pharisee, he didn't. And the tax collector, as big a sinner as he is, went home justified before God. And all throughout Jesus' ministry, Pharisees would come up to him and they would ask him, you know, what does it require to get into the kingdom of God? And one of them would come up and say, uh, look, I know I'm worthy because Abraham was my great, 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 great grandfather. So that makes me a Jew, and you know that Jews are God's chosen people, so I know that that's the right answer to why I'm worthy. And Jesus said, no, that's not the right answer to why you're worthy. And then, like this Pharisee, he said, you know, I've been really, 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 really good. I've kept all the commandments. And you remember the rich young ruler who said, I've kept them all, and Jesus said, great, that's just super. Now I want you to sell everything you've got and give the money to the poor and come and follow me. And then he was very sad. The ruler was very sad. And Jesus was sad too because that wasn't the right answer. A lot of people got the wrong answer, but just like Mrs. Dobson's blackboard, the right answer was there all the time. Do you remember all the stories where someone would come? You remember they lowered the guy through the tile roof mm -hmm. and he said, your faith has made you whole. And remember the woman who washed his feet with her tears mm -hmm. and he said to her, your faith has saved you. It was right before their eyes the whole time and they couldn't see it. Kingdom principle number one, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and all those who humble themselves are gonna be exalted. Mm -hmm. So the solution to this riddle is this. If you compare yourselves to others and because you're better than somebody else, you think that you're worthy, that's the wrong answer because being better doesn't get the job done. Being perfect is the requirement. You can't compare yourself with God's holiness or you can't compare yourself with others. You have to compare yourself with perfect. And I don't care who you are, Pharisee or not. Mm -hmm you're not gonna fit that bill. Mm -hmm. So riddle number one, when is being better a bad idea? Answers when you fully understand that being worthy means being perfect, like God. And if you have any other answer, what you're really telling God is that Jesus didn't really need to die because you, because you're better than somebody else, you're good enough to enter into the kingdom of God without any help. So you're telling God that he really didn't need to lose his son. And that is the wrong answer. Riddle number two. When is being a helpless child preferred to being the mightiest adult? Verse 15, we're in chapter 18. Verse 15, people were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. And when the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. No, this, he's a teacher. He's too important. He can't be kissing babies and, and blessing babies. He's got way bigger things to do. He's got to save the nation of Israel, you know, leave him alone. 
And Jesus' response was this. He called the children to him and he said, little, let the little children come to me and don't hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Okay, so here are his disciples and they're about to get another lesson. Okay, we, we understood, we really didn't understand, but we heard you say that the Pharisee didn't get justified and the tax collector did. And we're still trying to figure that one out. And then the next thing you know, you're telling us that in order to be worthy of the kingdom of God, we've got to become like little children. And I'm not real sure what that means. And you remember what happened when Nicodemus said, uh, you know, Jesus just told him, he says, uh, if you want to get into the kingdom of God, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. And he said, uh, does that mean I got to go back into my mother's room a second time? I don't understand that. So Jesus was always trying to tell people how to be worthy. And they just, they were riddles. So he said, let the little children come to me and don't hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, he says, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, they'll never enter it. Well, that's a new one, and that's a twist. So we go over to Matthew chapter 18, verse four, and we, say, we find out what it means. I've heard a lot of sermons on it, and one of the sermons was, well, you have to be like a little child and that a child believes and a child has faith. But Matthew points out a very different aspect of being a little child, and he says, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And what he's saying there is, children are humble. That They really have nothing to bring. They have nothing to offer. They're completely dependent. Little babies are completely dependent on their moms for food to take care of them and everything else. And little children are just as dependent. And what he's saying here is, is that if you want to inherit the kingdom of God, you have got to be just that dependent on God, not on yourself. If you're a grown up and you're a strong soldier and you're a really smart person and you depend on your smartness and your creativity, that'll probably get you okay and through some good stuff in life. But if you wanna get into the kingdom of God, there's really nothing you can do, even if you're the smartest person in the world or the most creative person in the world or the strongest person in the world, that's not gonna be enough because you see, you will not be able to get into the kingdom of God on your own efforts. You must, like a child, depend on your parent. And if your parent is God the Father, then you are his child. Good. So riddle number two, when is being like a helpless little child preferred to being the mightiest person on earth? And the answer, of course, is when the almighty God is your father. You're telling God that Jesus did not need to die if you aren't like that. If you aren't just like a child, you're saying to God, Jesus didn't need to die because you see, God, I'm really smart and and I'm really creative and I can really figure this kingdom of God thing out on my own. I can just kind of navigate through this and I can solve the riddles and I can, I can put the puzzle together. And God says, no, no, you can't. Because if you could, I wouldn't have had to send Jesus and he wouldn't have had to die. And the answer was just up in front of you on the chalkboard all <laughs> along, but you couldn't see it. So our prayers, our attitudes and our actions tell God the Father what we really believe. And being good and being smart and creative has great value when you're comparing yourself to others. If you're in the business world and you're really smart and you're really creative, you probably are gonna be more successful than your competitors. And if you're in a church and you're really good, you're probably going to be more highly thought of than somebody who's really not very good. And when you compare yourself to others, those are great things to strive for. They are. But they have very little value, and God would say they've got no value when compared to the perfection of God 
And if you're going to be worthy of his kingdom, you have to be like him. Be you holy as I am holy. Christ dies so that we can be worthy, so that we can be like God. That's way better than being smart. It's way better than being creative, and it's way better than trying to be good enough. These are two riddles that Jesus told to try to get people to understand that this is not a contest between one person and another. This was a contest between God and the devil. And Jesus died so that we could be made like God. Perfect, God's children. And that answer was available to the disciples all along. I can remember when he told them that the rich men couldn't get into the kingdom of God and they just threw their hands up and they said, so who then can be saved? Nobody can be saved if a good and rich person can't be saved. Who then can be saved? And Jesus said, you got to give up everything and follow me. And they said, we did that. And Jesus said, see, you had the answer all along. Mm -hmm. Better than is the primary theme of all mankind. Mm -hmm. It is at the heart of every single religion, except Christianity. In Buddhism, you're seeking enlightenment. You want to try to be better so that you can be like God. Humility, rather than being better than others, is humility is counter, cult, counter to our culture, mm -hmm. counter to our whole way of thinking. But it does come naturally when we fully understand what God has done for us in Christ. Mm -hmm. So, back to Mrs. Dobson. <laughs> On the chalkboard, the answer, just like in the life of Christ has been obvious all the time. When Abraham believed God and took Isaac to the top of the mountain to be sacrificed, God spared Isaac and says, I will provide the sacrifice. And Abraham believed God and left the Ur of Chaldees. He believed God and he took Isaac, his only son, to the top of the mountain and because he believed God. And when Jesus became the real sacrifice for atonement, the cross became the portal through which we become worthy. Jesus didn't just come to earth to tell us about the kingdom of God. He came to the earth to show us the way to the kingdom of God. He tried to tell us sometimes in riddles and sometimes in plain English, your faith has saved you. <laughs> Mm. but ultimately he came to show us how to enter into the kingdom of God because then he said, you see, I am the way mm -hmm. through which you enter the kingdom of God. Amen. By faith in what I've done on the cross, the answer was on the chalkboard all along. It's by grace. It's through faith. So Jesus continues to tell his riddles and his parables, and the Pharisees continue to scratch their heads. And quite frankly, the apostles weren't too sure what they were doing either. But 2,000 years later, with the whole New Testament for us, we know exactly what the answer is. It is by grace, through faith not in ourselves, not of ourselves, mm -hmm. because we can be really good, but we can't be perfect. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was. So, for those of you who are Christians, you knew the answers to these riddles. If you're watching and you aren't a Christian, you now know the answer. It's on the chalkboard right behind me. The answer is put your faith in what Christ has done yes. on the cross. Because any other answer, Ms. Dobson's going to say, I'm sorry, Mike. Go back, Go back to your seat and try again. So for all of us, he is worthy. Amen. So by faith, we are now worthy. Amen. Pray with me.
Father God, only because Jesus was worthy can I even begin to come before you and be part of your kingdom. So, Father, I, by faith, am your child. Not of works, not of anything I've done. I am forgiven and I am forever yours because of Jesus. So, Father, I pray for people who just are stumbling through these riddles that you will show them that the answer is on the cross and has been for two thousand years thank you lord for everything because you are everything yes. for us in jesus name we pray amen well we yeah. love you guys it's a great study mm -hmm. i love the book of luke well, of course there haven't been too many books that i didn't <laughs> love <laughs> hope you guys are safe hope to see you soon take care until then bev and i say bye-bye bye-bye see you then